Hello everybody. If you're one of those uh, people who subscribed to this channel, I don't know, seven or eight years ago and was hoping to see another video, my apologies for the delay, but I'm going to try to quick shoot something quick and dirty here, get some new content up. And this has been covered elsewhere, but I'm just going to try to go over it real quick today because uh, I think there's a new idea on this about how to get the absolute most out of our beloved Swiss Army knives, having all those little gadgets and accoutrements uh, handy. And there's been one kind of dilemma with this, which is the fourth slot issue and how to properly get a tool stored there and also for it to look decent. And if you're OCPD like me, that's an important consideration with your Swiss Army knives. Uh, so what I am doing is trying to breathe some new life into one of my beloved Victorinox compacts. It has some very uh, well-loved scales. As you can notice, these are older plus scales that do not have that fourth slot there. Uh, but I uh, followed Mi Zilch's recommendations for how to get these off with minimal damage. So they are definitely worth holding on to uh, that you can practice on. That's actually how I practice doing what I'm going to show you here. Uh, as well as if you ever want to toss plus scales onto a beater SAK. Uh, very nice to keep those on. So got these old scales off and I'm getting to ready to install new scales. But I was wondering, you know, what to do with that fourth slot that now comes here. So there is really only one tool that is purpose-built to fit there, be contoured to it appropriately. That is the shortened tweezers for the uh, electronic scale Swiss Army knives. And if you get those replacement parts kits, which I highly recommend, they come with a few of those. And I was finally compelled to try doing this when I got an Imperial Shrade uh, Centurion, I think is the name of this. So very close uh, clone to Victorinox knives. This was an interesting tool configuration though. You had a blade, a combo tool, and then a Phillips on the backside. So uh, like similar to the Victorinox long out of production model, the Apprentice. But uh, I knew I didn't want to mess with the logo side here and uh, both scales were sealed off. They actually did have a channel, but they weren't opened up. I don't know why they do that, but that was a great opportunity to open up that fourth slot. And using the tools I'm going to show you here, uh, that I was able to get it to a point where I was really happy with it. So this very svelte little knife, you have the uh, toothpick, the pen, a pair of tweezers, and there's a pin under there as well. Uh, and uh, that's just really cool to me. But where to put a firefly, right? So it always seems like you have to give up one thing to get everything here. So... Here's what a uh, modern day replacement scale looks like. Sorry, I'm doing this through the camera, uh, a little odd, but, uh, and as you can notice, it does have room for that scale. It, only this channel isn't opened up. And Felix Emler does a great video on how to do this. So that's what you can really watch in depth there. Um, and as you can see, there's room for that when it's all opened up. Um, but if you're trying to put in anything longer than that, you're gonna run out of room, so. I'm gonna follow with what someone had suggested, taking a 58 millimeter toothpick. But as you can see, if you were to put this here, it's gonna run into the pen channel. So I found somebody's comment that said, you could actually open that area up and then lay those in here like this. So you can see this is all set up with what's usually in the compact or in plus scales. We have the pin here. We have the firefly, which is taking the place of the conventional toothpick. And we have the pen and when that channel is fully opened up and hopefully i can do this on camera all right it looks like it is just barely going to fit like that uh, let's see and it looks like that might really be possible let's see it doesn't look like it protrudes out too much because there is just enough curvature i don't know if you can see this but it kind of angles inward so I am hoping that once I actually secure these scales in, that these uh, tools will be able to fit. And then at that point, I can maybe reprofile this plastic end here. I think that's the most viable solution short of some new specialized, uh, specially fit tool. I can kind of file it down, sand it down to fit the contours there. Uh, you can't really do that with the Firefly. If you tried to uh, mess with that tab, you'll probably break it off and then not be able to get the tool in. So this looked like that. You could, of course, also cut down a another toothpick and then try reprofiling it, but that looks pretty gnarly. And uh, I'm trying to keep things as simple and maintain the initial structure of the tool as much as possible. So we'll see how this turns out. I'm going to go ahead and secure these. If it turns out well, you will definitely see this spotlighted in a future video. And uh, hopefully more to come soon. And again, thank you as always for watching.
Hey everybody, I'm back just to give you a quick little update on this as well as something I think I intended to go over but didn't. Uh, so here is what the rescaled compact looks like and it was successful. Uh, so we were able to put the 58 millimeter toothpick in there at the same time that we have the pen. So uh, they're able to go in and sit alongside each other. It looks like there's you know minimal interactivity. Putting the toothpick in, for instance, didn't push the pen out. So that looks really good. Uh, we just have that kind of that blocky uh, tab there that I'm going to probably take my time filing, sanding down just to see if I can get to match the contour, but I used one of the uh, colored toothpicks anyway, so it should be less obvious even if it is a little less than perfect, but I'm really happy with how that turned out. So that does indeed work if you open up that channel. So again, Felix Emler really breaks this down into how to open up that channel, but just what I have found works best for me has been a getting yourself a just needle file set like this that was just a few bucks i think on amazon you can find them at harbor freight etc uh, but i usually will start on this by using the file on a leatherman wave it's just kind of right the right size to get that initial channel going it won't be quite as wide as you need it to be but uh then you can see where i've used this on red celador recently uh, a needle file like this that's blocky will be a nice way to then uh, start to get that channel squared off, opened up just a little bit, uh, and then eventually, you know, you'll want to uh, then put it over a, a corner and go kind of up and down to start to open the channel inwards as well as uh, from the, the height of the scale, if that makes sense. But yeah, the, those two tool, tools in combination just seem to work really well and you can get it to look really nice. Again, here's what this one looks like. I mean, it looks like a pretty factory opening. So if you just take your time and especially as you're getting towards the end, just do a few uh, filing strokes, try refitting and whatnot. Uh, you can just get really nice visually pleasing results. So thank you again for watching.